Welcome back. Before we go any further, let's take a moment to remind our viewers of what the Doha Agreement was all about. The agreement concluded last week ended Lebanon's worst clashes since the civil war. All parties agreed to form a national unity government with 16 cabinet posts going to the majority, 11 to the opposition and the choice of the remaining three in the president's hands. They also agreed to adopt the 1960 electoral law, which will see the capital Beirut divided into smaller electoral districts. However, some issues are still unresolved. Cabinet portfolios are still up for grabs. As for Hezbollah's weapons, it's been agreed they won't be used internally, but this doesn't satisfy United Nations requirements calling for total disarmament. Joining us again are our guests in Beirut, Mohsin Saleh, Saleh al Mashnouk, and Alastair Krook. Gentlemen, let me go to Mr. Mohsin Saleh. The future of the country depends on a large extent to, the, to its ties with the reg regional key players like Syria, Iran, and Saudi Arabia. About Syria, do the Lebanese now seem willing to forge one unified vision when it comes to dealing with Syria? I guess uh, they uh, could if uh, the intentions were uh, good also. And the, uh, the coalition of the authority, I mean the majority, they have to really think or rethink the situation in terms of the relation with Syria. They have accused S Syria of many things and Syria always saying we need uh, or we want the good for Lebanon. And after uh, this issue of opposition and the problem in Lebanon, and the, uh, the contribution and the participation in the cabinet, they said, well, the opposition having the orders from Damascus. And then we discerned that uh, actually the, the Syrians came and uh, agreed on a new president, consensual president, in fact, uh, General Suleiman. And uh, now everything should be all right in terms of uh, making uh, the, the situation in terms of media or in terms of uh, uh, declaring uh, some ideas some people they say well let's declare the war against Syria on the regime and 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 so on let's open a new page I guess we opened a new page in Lebanon but between to open all the parties uh, yeah to, to and open we we can open uh, sorry we to interrupt you there Mr. Mohsin Saleh but let me go to Saleh yes. al-Bashnuq to open a new page with Syria uh, presupposes that uh, both countries Lebanon and Syria will establish diplomatic ties does it seem to be likely in the near future um, well, the thing is, Lebanon has nothing to offer Syria in order to um, better its relations with Syria, although Syria has everything to offer. There was no assassination in Syria, there was no car bomb in Syria, there was no Islamic militants sent from Lebanon to Syria. Syria can take General Michel Suleiman's speech and take this as a basis in order to uh, improve its relations for Lebanon. There are very clear, very strict demands for Lebanon that are rightful in the international community, that is, diplomatic relations with Syria, uh, drawing the borders with Syria so we can um, decide on the issue of Shaba once and for all and deal with that accordingly. Um, and uh, these issues are the basis for the improvement of the relationship with Syria. Any other issues are mythical. If you well, want to change people's opinions on Syria, this will not happen. People, a lot of people dislike Syria because it has assassinated a lot of Lebanese leaders. This won't change, but Syria can deal with tangible issues such as diplomatic representation and the drawing of borders and helping uh, some of its um, military groups, uh, Palestinian groups in Lebanon um, disarm uh, as the Le Lebanese agreed back um, last year in the uh, national dialogue. Uh, all right. Mr. Alistair, there are two, it, it seems that there are two obstacles to better relations between the Syrians and the Lebanese. First of all, the uh, 14th March movement has been saying from the beginning that Syria is uh, destabilizing the country. The Syrians, on the other hand, have concerns that the 14th March movement is using the United Na Nations Tribunal to investigate the assassination of Rafiq Hariri as a Trojan horse to destabilize the Syrian uh, regime. Is there any way to balance both contradicting stances? Well, first of all, after the comment of the last speaker, I think it is just important to say that there's been absolutely no proof whatsoever that Syrians were involved in assassinations in, 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 in Lebanon. This is a subject of a UN uh, Commission of Investigation. Uh, but what I think is very clear is that Syria has made it uh, 
uh, plain that it's desirous to have friendly relations with Lebanon. I don't believe that it's anxious to go back to the past or, or return to what happened uh, before uh, the um, uh, removal of Syrian troops from Lebanon. I think that's very far from their mind. But it is important for them to have uh, good relations. And I think there is mutuality in this. Uh, both Syria wants to have good relations. I think the Syrian foreign minister's uh, visit here uh, yesterday to the presidential ceremony was a token of that. Uh, and I think equally uh, that it is in clearly in Lebanon's economic interests mm. to have good and substantial interests okay. with Syria too. Saleh, while uh, the uh, Doha agreement was seen as a landmark event, but then you have some saying that in fact, it seems that the Lebanese need international interference each time they are on the brink of collapse. In 1989, there was a Taif agreement, now the Doha. Isn't this uh, a sign that the Lebanese factions, most of the time, are heedful to the key regional players more than to the needs and the demands and the calls of their own people? Well, in terms to of me, the question... I'm asking, question sorry, yes, uh, it, it is. Mohsin Saleh. Yes. As far as the Americans are weak in the region, in Iraq and in Palestine and with Syria and Iran, the situation in Lebanon will be very good and Lebanon could have its stable situation and flourish and uh, really bring uh, tourists from all over the world and the situation I am sure will be very good because there are no obstacles uh, in, uh, in Lebanon except for the Israeli and American intervention. I should say about the uh, two things about the Syrian intervention. I guess this majority, uh, this what so-called majority now, they brought the Syrians to Lebanon and they they really were coordinating everything. Well, the that's a long history Lebanon. anyway, but okay. still we have yeah. the 14th March movement uh, well, which has been saying during the last two years that we officially blame Syrians for what has been going on during well, the last two years. Well, also they blame themselves. Assassinations, they said bomb we attacks were, and so we on were, so forth. Anyway. No, no, no assassination. Uh, well, there's, uh, as uh, your guest uh, Krook said, there is no uh, uh, fixed accusations against Syria and nobody could blame Syria because haven't, uh, nothing have been uh, shown yet. And that should be for the, uh, for the uh, judge in order okay, to say let me go to uh, Saleh al -Mashnuq. Has wisdom finally prevailed in Lebanon and power sharing now is a valid point? Um, no, this is what has happened has nothing to do with wisdom. Um, the Americans actually agreed after two and a half years of uh, not agreeing to the Syrian-Israeli negotiations and the price in return was the Syrians would allow their allies in Lebanon to elect General Michel Sleiman and give up on General Michel Aoun whose political career basically ended about last week. Um, what happened is the Iranians on the other hand were fearful of the Sunni Shiite strife and so it going beyond their borders, they're ruining their relationship with Saudi Arabia, etc. Um, what has happened in Lebanon has to do with the fact that the regional circumstances that are related to Syria and Iran were quite adequate in order to reach an agreement. On the other hand, um, the March 14th alliance did not listen to the Americans because the Americans are very clear on not wanting Hezbollah to take part of the government. The March 14th alliance said that Hezbollah can participate and can participate with the veto power too. Um, this is why this agreement is an uh, will only of the last States. about the next... It's, uh, this is why this agreement will last only about 11 months until the next parliamentary elections. John, and then there will be a reshuffling of cards concerning the main political there, points. We're running out of time. Mohsin Saleh, Saleh al Mashnuq, and Alessa Krook from Beirut, thank you very much indeed. And thank you so much for joining us here on this edition of Inside Story. We welcome your comments and suggestions. Please email them to us at insidestory at aljazeera.net. Goodbye for now.